Sitting up on the bench is an Energy AS90 powered subwoofer and it's got some problems with the amplifier. Well, we know a switch is broken on it for starters and apparently some of the controls are not also working properly. So let's uh, see what the problem with this one is. Today I'm working on what is known as a bus or a big ugly sub. And this one's got a few problems with it. One, the mode switch is snapped. And there's some other issues with it as well. So let's address the switch problem first. Let's rip the amp out of the uh, box. Before I actually remove the the unit from the box, I gotta love these units here. How many watts do you think this thing is uh, claiming to be? I don't know, but the power consumption is two amps. So with a power consumption of two amps, the power amplifier in this thing here is not that high. Nothing like what a lot of people think. A lot of people think, oh, my sub's got 500 watts. Good luck with that. With a little puny transformer like this, this thing doesn't have no 500 watts. In fact, it's got an STK4038. And that's good for, what, um, maybe 60 watts. I'm just going to undo the plugs here so I can remove the board from the uh, box here. And I can work on this outside of the uh, speaker box. So here's a new switch. Same, just this one here has uh, the right angle uh, pins on it, so this one I'll either have to just cut these pins off and put them in place and solder them down or attach wires to it. Since this switch is kind of foobarred, we're just going to cut the, them off flush and then I can reuse more than likely the same pegs to connect it. Now this other switch is not uh, does not appear to be fastened in in any way. It just was sitting in the board, so I should be able to just pop it straight through. For fear of getting lots of hates, I figured I would uh, not show you guys how I removed that switch. But I got a new one that will go in place of it, and it should fit in here. I got to remove this as well. It should fit into the uh, existing hole, and this one's held in place with a, uh, a nut so I can bolt it in place. I don't have to rely on using the circuit board to uh, support it like the old one. The old one was attached to the circuit board and uh, I guess the advantage to that is you could pull this back plane off and it would stay attached like this one here but not really necessary. That'll keep my troll happy.
there we go new switch nicely connected the uh, client was complaining that the switches controls were noisy so we're gonna get some deoxid and spray it in here clean those switches or those controls up and then we'll put it back together love this they don't want the competition knowing what dollar forty nine op amp they're using so they sand the top off the chip that was a common tactic so I got my good old neutral contact cleaner we'll spray this into the controls and rotate them a bit and then uh, we'll put the unit together and see what it does And actually, energy weren't bad units. They're actually fairly good units. But, you know, they're expensive. They're, there's a reason why energy um, subwoofers and so forth cost more than some of the ones out there. It's because, look at the quality. Look at that printed circuit board. It's beautiful. Right? It's just beautiful. I mean, you're using, they're using a Sanyo uh, power amp in there, but uh, the construction on this is very good even the LED I got a big blob of hot snot there to keep the wires in place but it's uh, you know well built now the reason for the extra and uh, places for capacitors is for a higher power version of this sub trick there see that was done by a lot of manufacturers but these ones here were made in Canada All right so this is uh, I have no fault of the circuitry on these, even though they do use a Sanyo power amp. But they, you know, they they were a good little unit. A um, little bit pricey, but I'd say the only thing I think that's gone wrong with this one, according to the owner, is was the uh, controls got dirty and he broke the switch. So new switch. Let's get the box back up here and mount this. Even the box is well made on this. Like a lot of the cheap ones, I've got a cheap one. I got a cheap one I bought at Costco. And, well, you see the back of the speaker here. There's another, it's sealed, right? The amplifier is not in the back end of the speaker. The cheap one that I have, the amplifier is bolted right into the back, in the back of the speaker. And you get all the back pressure from the speaker hammering away at the electronics. On this one here, the speaker itself is sealed. Those are some of the subtle differences that made the good brands worth the money compared to some of the cheap knockoff ones. But when I bought my sub, I wasn't wanting to spend 500 bucks for it. I think I got mine for 149 And I haven't used it. I haven't used it in many many years I don't I don't even think it's plugged in anymore I when I built my home theater it's still sitting there on the floor but uh, unfortunately anytime I want to watch a movie that has some good sound I get yelled at to turn it down can't really enjoy a movie without good sound and when you get yelled at to turn it down it's too boomy generally tend to turn it off and listen and watch the action movie with no bass. I think I'm going to have to charge my little screwdriver up. It's not bad. I haven't charged this thing in a long time. I've only charged this like twice since I got it. 
Okay, I've got this thing hooked up. I'm using the high level speaker inputs on it because I don't have a pre out on this amplifier. But we'll hear it kick in. That's if it's going to work. There we go. Yeah. That's why I don't really like subs because I. I'm not a big sub fan, especially for music. This one's got a switch. That apparently, it just changes the way the equalizer works on it. But um, and we can change the low pass frequency. One hundred and eighty degrees out of phase for different room sizes and so forth. Or if you're speakers are wired out of phase. Must be a Hilton Honors member. Applicable terms and conditions at Hilton.com. Pinky swear. The Clydesdale Inn Pub and Liquor Store has everything you like to drink and have below government liquor store prices. Beer, wine, liquor. Yeah, if you really like that boomy sound, liquor store. you can't beat the sub. 176 A Street, Cloverdale. I'm making things shake in the in the shop here. Serious health problems, lung diseases, and cancer. It's asbestos, a danger hiding in plain sight. If you're renovating a home built before 1990, as a homeowner, you need to talk to your contractor about for asbestos testing and proper removal for the health and safety. A fair bit of air that moves out of the back of this thing. Learn more at thinkasbestos.com. A message from WorkSafe BC. There we go. This thing's fixed. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you again in the next one real soon.